So, you just got a brand new drone. You've unboxed it, charged it up, and you're ready for that epic first flight, but then, nothing. Or maybe it takes off, but it's flying a little... funky. It happens to the best of us, and honestly, it's a super common part of the learning curve. That's exactly why I'm making this video. This is your beginner's guide to troubleshooting some of the most frequent issues you might run into with your drone. Think of it as a first aid kit for your quadcopter. We're going to walk through a handful of common problems from the drone just refusing to lift off the ground to shaky video feeds that ruin your perfect shot. The goal here is to give you a checklist of quick simple fixes that you can try right away, right out in the field. No complex tools, no deep technical dives, just straightforward steps that solve probably 90% of the issues new pilots face. It's all about getting you back in the air as quickly and painlessly as possible. And the best part? You absolutely do not need to be a tech genius or an experienced pilot to follow along. I've designed this guide specifically for first-time owners. I'll break everything down step by step, explaining the why behind the what, so you not only fix the problem but also understand your drone a little bit better. By the end of this, you'll feel way more confident handling these little hiccups on your own. Let's get into it. Alright, first up is probably the most common and easily the most frustrating issue. Your drone just won't take off. You're pushing the sticks, you hear the motors whine, but it stays firmly planted on the ground. The very first thing you should always check, and I mean always, is the battery. It sounds obvious, but it's the number one culprit. Is it fully clicked into place? Sometimes it can look secure, but isn't making a proper connection. Take it out and put it back in, making sure you hear that satisfying click. Also, double check the charge level. A battery that's too low won't have the juice to lift off, even if the lights are on. It's a simple check, but it solves the problem more often than you'd think. So the battery is good, it's fully seated, but you're still grounded. The next stop on our checklist is the propellers. Look closely at each one, are they all installed correctly? Most drones have two types of propellers, usually labeled A and B, or with different color markings, and they need to be on the correct corresponding motors. Putting a prop on the wrong motor means it will spin, but it will push air the wrong way effectively holding the drone down instead of lifting it up. Check your drone's manual. It will have a clear diagram showing which prop goes where. It's a five second visual check that can make all the difference. If the battery and props are solid, the final thing to look at for a takeoff failure is calibration. Your drone needs to know that it's on a flat level surface before it can safely fly. If you initiated the startup sequence on a slope or uneven ground, the drone's internal gyroscope and accelerometer might be confused, preventing takeoff as a safety precaution. The fix is simple. Turn everything off, move the drone to a completely flat spot, and restart the entire power-on sequence. This simple recalibration tells the drone, okay, this is level, and it should give you the green light for takeoff. Okay, so you're airborne, which is great. But now you're noticing the drone isn't holding its position. It's drifting to one side or it seems to be wobbling and flying unsteadily, even with no wind. This is a classic symptom of a compass issue. Your drone's compass is crucial for knowing its orientation and holding a steady hover. It can easily be thrown off by magnetic interference from things like metal objects, power lines, or even the rebar in concrete. The fix is a compass recalibration, and it's something you should get comfortable doing regularly, especially when you fly in a new location. The recalibration process is pretty standard across most drones. You'll find the option in your drone's flight app. It typically involves a two-step dance. First, you hold the drone out and rotate it horizontally 360 degrees until the app tells you to move to the next step. Then, you'll flip the drone vertically, facing the camera down, and do another full 360-degree rotation. This process allows the drone to get a clean reading of the Earth's magnetic field in that specific spot, free from any local interference. Completing this simple dance usually results in a much more stable, locked-in hover. But what if you've recalibrated and it's still acting weird? Take a look at your surroundings. Are you flying near large metal structures like a radio tower, a metal roof, or even your car? All of these can create magnetic fields that mess with your drone's sensitive internal compass. The solution is often as simple as walking 20 or 30 feet away to a more open area. Also, check your pockets. Believe it or not, having your smartphone too close to the drone during setup can sometimes cause minor interference. Giving your drone a bit of clean, open space is key for a steady, reliable flight. You've probably seen the GPS satellite count in your flight app. This is what allows your drone to know its exact location. 
hover perfectly in place and perform smart functions like return to home. So what do you do when you're stuck waiting forever for the drone to acquire enough satellites for a strong GPS lock? The most common reason for this is simply your location. GPS signals are coming from space and they need a clear line of sight. If you're trying to take off under a thick canopy of trees, next to a tall building, or in a deep valley, those signals are getting blocked. The solution here really is patience and positioning. The first thing to try is just moving the drone. Walk out into the middle of a field or a parking lot, somewhere with a wide open view of the sky. Set the drone down and just give it a minute or two. You'll often see the satellite count on your app start to climb steadily as the drone gets a clearer picture of the sky. It might feel like you're just standing around, but this is a crucial step for a safe flight. Flying without a strong GPS lock means you lose many of the drone's best safety features. Another factor can be weather. Very heavy cloud cover or solar flares, though less common, can also interfere with GPS signal strength. There isn't much you can do about the sun, but if it's an incredibly overcast day, you might just have to accept a slightly lower satellite count. The key is to wait for your drone's app to give you the ready-to-fly GPS or safe-to-fly message. Don't be tempted to take off in a non-GPS mode unless you are an experienced pilot and fully understand the risks. For beginners, waiting for that strong GPS lock is always the smartest and safest choice. One of the biggest promises of modern drones is flight time. But sometimes it just feels like you're getting way less than the advertised 25 or 30 minutes. If your flights are feeling disappointingly short, there are a few things to consider about battery health and usage. First, let's talk about charging. Are you using the official charger that came with your drone? Third-party chargers might not be optimized for your specific batteries, which can lead to improper charging and over time reduced capacity. Also, avoid flying a battery immediately after it comes off the charger. Letting it cool down for 10 to 15 minutes can actually improve its performance and longevity. Battery care is a marathon, not a sprint. How you store your batteries is just as important as how you charge them. Leaving a drone battery fully charged for weeks on end is one of the worst things you can do to it. It puts stress on the cells and degrades them over time. Similarly, storing them completely empty is also damaging. Most smart batteries have a self-discharge feature that brings them down to a safe storage level, usually around 50 to 60% after a few days. If your batteries don't have this, try to manually discharge them to that level if you know you won't be flying for a while. It's a little bit of extra work, but it will pay off with healthier batteries that last longer. Finally, think about how you're flying. Are you constantly flying at full speed? fighting against strong winds or carrying extra weight like a third-party lens filter or prop guards. All of these things make the motors work harder, which drains the battery much faster. Aggressive flying in sport mode will chew through a battery in a fraction of the time a smooth, cinematic flight will. If you want to maximize your time in the air, fly gently, try to fly in calm conditions, and keep the drone as light as possible. A few small adjustments to your flying style can add precious minutes to every flight. There's nothing worse than lining up the perfect shot, only to have the video feed on your phone or controller start to stutter, freeze, or heck, just go completely black. This is a video transmission issue, and it's all about the connection between your drone and your controller. The most common cause is the orientation of your controller's antennas. For most controllers, the antennas work best when they're parallel to each other and pointed upwards, or oriented so that the flat sides are facing the drone. Pointing the tips of the antennas directly at the drone is actually the weakest signal orientation. Think of the signal like a donut coming out of the flat sides of the antennas. You want your drone to be in the donut, not the donut hole. So as you fly, make a conscious effort to keep your body and the controller oriented towards the drone and adjust your antennas to maintain that optimal alignment. It's a small habit to build, but it makes a massive difference in maintaining a strong, stable video link, especially as you start to fly further away. A clean line of sight is everything for a good signal. If your antenna orientation is perfect and you're still getting a choppy feed, look for obstacles. Your video signal, which is usually on a 2.4 or 5.8 GHz frequency, does not like to travel through solid objects. Trees, buildings, hills. Anything that gets between you and the drone will degrade the signal significantly. 
The fix is to either fly higher to get above the obstacles or move your own position so you maintain a clear line of sight. Also be aware of other sources of radio interference, like Wi-Fi routers or other pilots flying nearby. Sometimes, just changing the transmission channel in your app settings can clear things up. This next one can stop a flight before it even begins your controller or the flight app on your phone simply refuses to connect to the drone. You turn everything on in the right order. Controller first, then the drone. But the app just keeps saying, disconnected. The very first, and simplest, fix to try is the classic, turn it off and on again. Seriously. Power down the drone, the controller, and fully close the app on your phone. Then, power everything back on in the correct sequence. This reinitiates the connection handshake and can often resolve a temporary software glitch. If a simple restart doesn't work, the next step is to check for updates. Drone manufacturers are constantly releasing firmware updates for the drone, the controller, and the flight app itself. These updates often contain crucial bug fixes, including patches for connection problems. Open your flight app while connected to Wi-Fi and check for any pending updates. It's critical that all three components, drone, controller, and app, are running on the latest compatible versions. A mismatch between firmware versions is a very common reason for connection failures. Still no luck? Let's check the physical connections. If your controller connects to your phone with a cable, try a different cable. These little cables can get worn out or damaged easily, and a faulty cable is a frequent point of failure. Also, try a different USB port on your controller if it has one. If your connection is wireless, Try forgetting the Wi-Fi network for the drone on your phone and then reconnecting to it. Going through these steps, restarting, updating, and checking the physical link will solve the vast majority of controller connection issues and get you ready for takeoff. Let's talk about the parts that do all the hard work, the motors and propellers. If you hear an unusual grinding noise, notice one motor isn't spinning as freely as the others or the drone seems to be tilting heavily to one side in the air you could have a motor or prop issue. After any rough landing or crash, even a minor one, your first step should be a thorough physical inspection. Turn the drone off and remove the battery. Now carefully inspect each propeller. Look for any nicks, cracks, or stress marks, especially near the hub. Even a tiny bit of damage can unbalance a prop, causing vibrations that can affect flight performance and video quality. If you find a damaged propeller, don't hesitate. Replace it immediately. Propellers are cheap, and are designed to be a point of failure to protect the more expensive motors. Always replace them in pairs, both the A and B props on opposite arms, to maintain balance even if only one looks damaged. After checking the props, spin each motor by hand. Do they all feel the same? Is there any grittiness or resistance in one of them? A gritty feeling could mean a piece of debris like sand or dirt has gotten inside, or that a bearing is damaged. If you suspect debris is in a motor, you can try to dislodge it with a can of compressed air. A few gentle puffs into the motor vents might be all it takes. If the motor is still grinding or won't spin freely after cleaning, it's likely damaged internally and will need to be replaced. For most beginners, this is where you might want to contact the manufacturer's support or a professional repair service. But for many common issues, a simple prop swap and a quick inspection are all that's needed to solve what seems like a major mechanical problem. And there you have it. That's a rundown of some of the most common issues that new drone pilots run into, and more importantly, how to fix them. My goal here was to empower you with a solid troubleshooting checklist. Before you panic and think your brand new drone is broken, run through these steps. Check the battery, inspect the props, recalibrate the compass, find a clear space. These simple fixes can save you a lot of frustration and potentially a lot of money on unnecessary repairs. They build your confidence and help you understand how these amazing pieces of technology actually work. Of course, this isn't a completely exhaustive list. Drones can be complex and there will always be unique situations. That's where this community comes in. If you're dealing with a problem that we didn't cover today, or if you have your own pro tip for fixing a common issue, please drop it in the comments below. The comments section can be an incredible resource for everyone, and your experience could be the exact solution someone else is searching for. Let's help each other out and share our knowledge. I hope this guide was helpful and gives you the confidence to get back out there and fly. Getting past these initial hurdles is a huge part of the journey, and it gets so much easier from here. If you found this video useful, definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. I have a lot more drone content planned.
from in-depth reviews of the latest models to more advanced flying tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.